The Dallas Stars are playoff bound, but they still have a little bit of business to take care of to close out the regular season. Tonight, they have their home finale, the regular season finale against the Anaheim Ducks. But we'll talk about this team heading into the postseason. Is there cause for concern with how Wednesday night went? But is there also a little bit of optimism going forward because of the playoff clinch and a lot of the young potential? And of course, we'll give you a quick overview and preview of this Ducks team heading into this matchup, all coming up on this Friday episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credential member of the Dallas Stars media, coming to you on this Friday, April 29th, the final day of the NHL regular season. And not a whole lot at stake for the Stars, or at least not a lot of pressure. There is some things at stake, uh, but the pressure of making the postseason is off their shoulders. Uh, but they still need to take care of business tonight against the Anaheim Ducks for a chance to be higher seated in the postseason over the Nashville Predators. But whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. Leave a comment, rating, or review if you like what you hear. We are free and available no matter where you listen or how you listen. But without any further hesitation, let's get right into today's episode. And let's retrace our steps a little bit back to Wednesday night. Uh, We did a crossover yesterday uh, with Locked On Coyotes and talked a little bit about the game and talked a little bit about the future for the teams in the coming months, playoffs for the Stars, looking towards the draft and free agency um, and offseason free agency at that for the Coyotes and didn't really get to talk about post game uh, as far as the press conferences and what was said by bonus as well as some of the players. Uh, But it's just it was a weird feeling on Wednesday because the Stars did clinch a playoff spot, but Also lost a game in which they had a 3-0 lead against one of, if not the worst team in the National Hockey League. Uh, They gave up three unanswered goals in regulation and then a a fourth uh, unanswered goal in overtime. They do secure the point, but they still kind of lost in concerning fashion, uh, if you ask me. Um, And, you know, it it was a weird vibe from, you know, the players, but also even Coach Bonus. Uh, Let's go ahead and take a listen to what Rick and Jamie had to say post game about the loss uh disappointed in the outcome of that game you know we just uh i mean gave them all their goals uh just didn't stay uh mentally sharp for uh 60 minutes and can't be given up a three nothing late in the third period they did a good job of, of coming at us and, and we kind of fed into that as well. Different ending tonight, like that's just self-inflicted. This is, I don't know, the guys just stopped thinking. We won the face off, we passed it to them, then we just let a guy just skate right by us and score. We win a face off for, for the defenseman and the forward aren't on the same page. We give it to them, they throw it at the net, hits the skate and goes in. Then we take a completely unnecessary penalty when we're killing a penalty. So, you know what, you move on and we'll get ready for the playoffs. You take a talk about taking your foot off the gas and I went over the goals just like we just did. It's a lazy back check, let the guy walk in like that. And then uh, again, this is not on the same page in the face offs and we're killing a penalty and we take that penalty. Come on. Right? We don't. That's, anyways, we're in the playoffs. It's great for the city. It's great for our fans. And it's going to be a great atmosphere here when we get back. Game was in order pretty good for the most part. And then we can, it's easy to clean up those things. That's easy to clean up. It, it is. It's just, just don't take your foot off the pedal. Yeah, I mean, we had 13 scoring chances in the second period and got one goal. Right? That game should have been over in the second period. 
but we didn't score. And they give their goalie credit. He kept them in the game and gave them a chance to win. He did his job. Wedgie was not at fault in any of those goals. He did his job. So, hey. And it's weird. And I, I can hear a lot of people already in the comments or on social media uh, as if maybe it hasn't already been said already, talking about especially what Bonus said of, you know, you, you, you know, he's that he personally isn't really worried from what he saw. Uh, and to his credit, some of the goals scored were weird freak plays i mean you look at that shane gossis bear goal that bounces off i think joe pavelski and jason robertson skate uh you have dallas committing an unnecessary penalty to go down three versus five uh you know when they were already down a man on the on the penalty kill which uh, that's cause for concern um you you don't want to commit penalties especially when you're already down a man on the ice and uh you know it's just a, a kind of a weird sequence of goals but also things that could have been prevented and the stars could have done better so it, it's a weird mix of you know to his credit Yes, you want to you know say that you're fine because you still played two really good periods of hockey. You did things well in that game, but at the same time, you also do need to address those issues uh, and take those head on and, and learn from those mistakes. So, you know, to his credit, and I'm not saying that he's necessarily right or wrong for what he said or for his mindset. I mean, as a coach, you you don't want to you know harp on the failure of this game too long because that's just not good for your team's confidence or morale or just the right way to go about it but also you do need to address those concerns so i think you know the feelings were a little bit offset because the stars did clinch a playoff spot they did what they needed to do uh but also you know I'm, and i'm sure maybe more is being said behind closed doors and practices team meetings things like that but some things need to be addressed and even i mean jamie ben not one for a lot of words in his post game press conferences but i mean you could just kind of tell that there was a little bit of okay yeah we made the postseason but you know, it, it wasn't necessarily the way that we wanted to do it. And so I, I know that he and the rest of his teammates will be seeking, you know, to to be better uh, in this final game against the Ducks as well as in the postseason, because whether they play Calgary or Colorado, those are two teams that, you know, if you get a 3-0 lead against, you better not blow that lead. Uh, and you better play some of your bet. You, you better be playing better when you have a 3-0 lead uh, than you are at a 0-0 game or even a, a smaller lead or at a deficit. Uh, you cannot take your foot off the pedal against a team like the Flames or the Avs. I mean, they will make you pay in a hurry if you even for a, a second uh, think about taking your foot off the gas. So definitely need to clean some things up. They need to be sharp and learn from their mistakes. And, and the beauty of tonight's game is, you know, they the pressure of making the postseason is off their shoulders, but they still want to finish with as many points as possible to potentially finish above the Preds. Um, and I am recording this before that Colorado Predators game. So a lot of implications there. And by the time you're hearing this, that game will already have finished. So who knows how the standings look at this point by the time you're hearing this. But, you know, this game against the Ducks, regardless of the results, it is a great opportunity for the Stars to, you know, have one final tune-up before the postseason, get things ironed out and figure out, you know, what they need to do and who they need to be going into this playoff run. And so it's a, a monumental game from a point standpoint as far as standings and playoff positioning, but also just for the mentality and the final well-being for this team uh, for the regular season before they go into a chaotic Stanley Cup playoff run. But we will continue to talk about this game and a little bit of the happier sides of the implication. We'll hear some audio from Scott Wedgwood and Miro Haskin and hear their thoughts about heading to the Stanley Cup playoffs. But before we do that, do you want to take a moment and say thank you to some of our sponsors? Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Summer is coming, and with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations. Throw them in your bags or your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a Built Bar so you are fueled up for your summer adventures. The best part about Built Bars, they are healthy and delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. Most Built Bars contain only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories. 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. And moving on on today's episode of Locked on Stars, this is your host, Dane Lewis, at Dane double underscore Lewis on Twitter. 
you can follow me there. You can also follow our show's account at Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day for stopping by the show. Whether you're a recurring listener or you're new here, if you've just found our content, uh, looking for some, some good Dallas Stars content gearing up for the playoffs, this is the perfect place to do that. We upload daily content Monday through Friday on YouTube, on your favorite podcasting platform. So please do subscribe and follow if you do not do so already. Thank you guys again for stopping by. But let's continue to talk about the implications from Wednesday night's game before we eventually get to a preview of tonight's game. Uh, because while there was a little bit of bad and some things that need to be addressed as far as discipline and, and you know making sure that teams don't come back from 3-0 deficits, there was some optimism Wednesday because, like I said, the Dallas Stars are playoff bound. And that's an exciting thing, especially for a lot of these young guys. That, I mean, we talked about earlier in the week, this is a great opportunity for Jason Robertson to finally put himself full on display to the NHL world. I feel like, you know, the Dallas Stars know about him. There's probably a handful of Central Division teams that, you know, are aware of his presence and probably been upset because of what he's done to their team. But I, I still feel like that there's a, a good audience in the NHL that maybe just knows the name, but they don't know how good this kid really is. So Jason Robertson, due for a big playoff performance in his NHL playoff debut. Rope Hintz, also due for a big performance. But the guys we heard from in the postgame press conference on Wednesday, Scott Wedgwood, and Miro Haskin and Wedgwood started the year on a team uh, that was not playoff bound in New Jersey, found his way to Arizona, another team not playoff bound. But now he's with Dallas, who is going to the playoffs, and he is a part of one of the best goalie tandems going into this postseason, at least as it stands right now. And we also heard from Miro Haskin on Wednesday night. I uh, hadn't heard from him in a press conference in a while. He seems to be getting hot at the right time. So let's listen to what Scott Wedgwood and Miro Haskin had to say about the upcoming Stanley Cup playoffs. They obviously happy as a club. It's a, a big point and you know, a playoff berth is what we're fighting for and it's huge for our organization, our team, all the guys that we've they've done all year and since I've been here it's been a, a tough battle. So, you know, you kinda you're obviously upset losing a game when you can get another another point in the seventh spot race, but uh, you know, it takes a, a lot of pressure off Fridays for just getting alive, which we are now, so Win a game on uh, on Friday and and see what happens. Yeah, I mean you just gotta obviously be firing all cylinders going to a playoff, especially you know the two teams we have a potential to face and they're they're strong teams. They've been strong all year. Um, you know I'm excited for what our group can do and you know, obviously playoffs a different animal and we got a, a four line sixty man team with uh, you know a hell of a goalie on the other side there with Ott. So we'll uh, we'll give where we face a hell of a run and just kind of you know looking forward to, to getting that going after Friday. Oh, excited about playoffs! Of, of course, it's it's great to be there again, and <clears throat> that's the most fun time of the year playing playoffs. So yeah, really excited about it. Yeah, a little weird too. It's of course it's great to play in, be in the playoffs, but yeah, that wasn't wasn't the game we want to play, and that's of course it sucks. The last period wasn't good enough, and we want to play better than that. Oh, of course we have to. Have to play really hard. I think we are we are great when we, when we play hard and work work hard. That's that have to be our mindset when when we go in, going to game one and yeah, whoever comes against us. But yeah, just play hard and work hard. It's so encouraging to hear the optimism in these guys' voice and the 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 sparkle in their eyes. As weird as that sounds, I, I won't say that again. Um, I don't I don't know what that was, but that that's just what it was. You could see the the joy uh, in the expressions on their face when talking about getting to play. Uh, in the playoffs, Miro, I mean, he's been there in this situation before, and we've seen him do great things. You look back to that bubble run in 2020, and Miro Haskinen was a part of the heart and soul of that star squad. And so I fully expect him to come out and be a force for this team in the postseason. And Wedgwood, whether he is the go-to guy in game one of the first round or whether it's Jake Ottinger, I expect him to stay fresh and stay ready both mentally and physically. And I think that he's going to be a great piece to this team. Again, whether he's backing up Jake Ottinger or whether he is the go-to guy, I'm, I'm confident in him and excited for him to get this opportunity because he even joked about it in his post-game presser. He's just been around the league so much early on in his career. And uh, who knows if Dallas is going to be his home long-term just with the implications of Jake Ottinger's looming at what seems to be a contract extension on the horizon and, you know, Wedgwood proving himself in the back half of this season, he's probably going to get a decent paycheck in the offseason. Who knows if it'll be from the Stars or if it'll be from someone else. But these playoffs are a fantastic opportunity for him to prove himself to the NHL world also and, and, and show that he's not just good in the regular season, but that he's a great guy to have on your roster 
in the postseason as well. So I'm excited for him and Miro Haskin, and as well as a lot of the young, other young guys I mentioned uh, in Robo, uh, Rope Hintz, who spent the postseason with the Stars before Jacob Peterson, making his NHL postseason debut. Uh, going to be really exciting stuff to see. And of course, all of those guys led by some fantastic veteran talent in Joe Pavelski, who uh, we, I don't think I mentioned it at all, oddly enough, on yesterday's episode in the crossover, but he now has a new career high in points with 81 uh, that game against Arizona um, getting two assists on the night. So huge congratulations to him. That is fantastic to see um, really good stuff. And I mean, he could potentially get even more points tonight uh, against the Anaheim Ducks and Rope Hintz needs three goals. He needs a hat trick in order to be a 40 goal scorer on the year. And I am hoping that it happens. That'd be awesome. Uh, Rope Hintz, certainly no stranger to uh, hat tricks this season as he, um, it just has been a goal machine for the Stars. So expecting big things from them tonight. And speaking of tonight's game, after another quick break, we will talk about this matchup between the Stars and Ducks. There is a, a guy playing this game. This will be his final NHL game. And he, he plays for the Anaheim Ducks. And a lot of you probably already know who I'm talking about. But we will talk about that player and more as it concerns to this matchup after another quick break. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is also brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start to Major League Baseball season. This is a fun time to be a sports fan. We have Major League Baseball in full swing. The NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs are finally here, and you can bet on all of those and more at betonline.net. They are your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline.net where the game starts. And we're closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars by talking about the final regular season game of the 21-22 season, the finale, uh, before we get to the true finale, which is the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Stars will host the Anaheim Ducks for the first time in a long time. And for the first time and only time this season, these teams met up for back-to-back -back games in Southern California earlier this season. Dallas won both of those games and, and what proved to be huge points and a huge swing for the Stars at that point in the season. The Ducks have been out of playoff contention for a while now. They come into this game with a 31, 36, and 14 record. Uh, but they won their last game on Tuesday. They beat the San Jose Sharks by a score of 5-2. to two. But the biggest storyline coming in for this game, for this team, uh, is of course, this will be the final game that Ryan Getzlaff plays in his NHL career. He's 36 years old out of Regina, Saskatchewan, picked 19th overall in 2003 by the Anaheim Ducks. He's, I mean, especially just in the modern day in sports, it's hard to see any professional athlete stay with their original team. But Ryan Getzlaff was an Anaheim Duck through and through from day one of his NHL career to tonight's game and you got to respect that that's awesome he has 282 total goals as of right now these numbers are subject to change with the final game 737 assists 1019 points all time for the longtime ducks captain and he of course was a member of that stanley cup team back in 2007 so hats off to him for a fantastic career i mean just being a, a team based out of anaheim i haven't watched too many games that he's played in but just you know over the past few weeks seeing teams uh pay respect to him and the nhl community pay respect to him has been really cool to see so that will be a big storyline surrounding this game uh i mean would love to see the stars win this game but if ron getzloff wants to pick up a, a goal or a few points um i mean that's that's fine by me uh go out on top as best you can just don't get the win against the stars. Sorry, Ryan gets laughed. That's uh, I don't make the rules, but I, I do my best to speak them out loud, if you will. And Dallas, uh, you know, they're still looking to potentially uh, be in the top wild card spot again. At the time of recording this, I don't know how that Colorado Nashville game ended up because it hasn't happened yet. But tonight, Nashville will be playing the Arizona Coyotes. So still very much a chance for the stars to have that top wild card spot for a matchup with the flames, uh, which I think would be a better matchup for them instead of having to play against the Colorado avalanche, but the stars need to take care of business and we have to hope 
that the Arizona Coyotes can come through one last time and create just a little bit more chaos. But for this Ducks team, I mean, you have Ryan Getzloff playing his last NHL game, but you also have to be on the lookout for their young talent, Troy Terry, Trevor Zegras leading the way offensively, and they they caused their fair share of a ruckus against the Stars in their previous two games this season. Got to be on the lookout for them. I mean, like Arizona, and we talked about it on yesterday's episode, players are not typically the ones tanking whenever you see a team that's out of the playoff picture looking to get a good draft pick. It's normally the front office uh, and, and the guys behind the scenes that want tanking to happen. I mean, these guys uh, are playing for you know pride for themselves, playing for their teammates, playing for jobs next season. I mean, some of these guys are looking to earn a contract over the summer and continue to play professional hockey. So don't expect this to just be a rollover game for the Anaheim Ducks, especially uh, with this being gets off last game. I'm sure they will try their hardest to get a win uh, for their captain in his final tilt uh, as a professional NHL player. But I do think the Stars get this one done. I think it'll probably be closer than it needs to be about a three to two score. Uh, and again, I'm saying Rope Hint scores first because I want to see him get this hat trick and I want him to be a 40 goal scorer for this season. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for stopping by and making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. Leave a comment, rating, review. If you like what you hear, follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. You can also find our show on Twitter at Locked on Stars. Be sure to tune in on Monday as we get ready for the NHL playoffs. It's going to be a fun ride, folks. You are going to want to be here for every moment of it because we have you covered every Monday through Friday with all the latest and freshest Dallas Stars content. But have a great weekend, Stars fans, and we will see you back here on Monday. 